Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to Pivot and Thrive. I'm Karin McCarthy, the founder of Vermont Collaborative Circle in the home of Pivot and Thrive Community, an online resource for entrepreneurs who are working to make Vermont the place where businesses and families thrive. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to connect with people in the Pivot and Thrive series. We are interviewing business owners who are demonstrating creativity, collaboration, and resilience so that we can learn from each other's stories and be inspired and grow our businesses better and faster. Before we begin today, I'd like to recognize the Abenaki Nation on whose traditional land we're having this discussion. We acknowledge the rich cultural history and honor them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land, the beautiful dawn land, the lakes, rivers, and mountains of Vermont that we know and love. We are recording today, and I wish that we could be doing this in person, but um, stay well, everyone, in this pandemic. We'll have a Q&A at the end. Feel free to populate your questions in the chat, and we definitely want to get to them. Um, so feel free to write them as you go, and, and we'll have um, the opportunity to, um, to ask your questions at the end. I am so, so happy that you're here with us today and for the opportunity to showcase Vereen. Paris Mayer. She is a storyteller and she creates heart-centered storytelling spaces through workshops, community engagements, food retreats, and more through her business, All Heart Inspirations. Welcome, Farine. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for for joining us. Um, as Karen said, I'm Fareen. I use she, her pronouns, and I am so excited to be here. Um, and as the owner and creator of All Heart Inspirations, uh, what an honor, because just a year ago, um, this business did not exist. Um, it was still a dream that was manifesting in a journal of sorts as I would make my way through coffee shops um, in local Burlington, August 1st, Nomad um, and so forth, just kind of writing out the vision that I would want someday when I could take um, ownership of my life um, and, and be the creator of how joy was being sparked and purpose was being created. All Heart Inspirations is a half year old. Um, I launched it on July 1st of last summer. And as you shared, I am really centered in creating heartfelt spaces through storytelling. Um, I pride myself as a storyteller. It's one of my salient identities, you know, like I'm a black woman, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a storyteller. Um, and I feel honored that this, one of our oldest traditions of how we in our history have passed down um, our narratives to each other um, for centuries upon centuries and being able to um, arc myself in that and just simplifying uh, uh, how we can connect um, without all the frills. You know, it's simply a, an ear, a voice, um, sharing who we are back and forth, um, the re reciprocity of being a listener, being a storyteller. And it's been cool to do it in a variety of different ways. Um, in the past half year, I've done storytelling on sailboats with the Whistling Man Company. I've done storytelling at the Great Northern with Zero Gravity, pairing beers over a four course meal. Um, I've done food pop-ups at August 1st. Um, some of them, uh, Sasha's on this call, her and I collaborated uh, just last month and we did a restorative uh, yoga storytelling retreat um, for black women in our community. Um, so I really just tailor it to what different folks need in that given moment. Um, and we um, create something that can empower us to validate one another and affirm each other's stories because we yeah. all have a story worthy of telling. That is so powerful and I'm so, <laughs> what a strong opening. Thank you. You clearly are the artist of a storyteller and, and connected to it. I think so many of us um, make the mistake of living our lives of we're, we're waiting to, until we have the time to do the thing that we're connected with or we're not yet ready to share the secret that we're carrying with us of the hope or dream that we have for ourselves or future or potential. So I'm so happy for you that you were able to 
you know, bring that from a space of journaling and, and uh, you know, like that, the protected space to something that you're sharing and connecting with other people and, and that you're putting out in the world. Um, and that, that takes a lot of trust and uh, in yourself and in other people. So uh, thank you for taking that leap of faith and for sharing, um, sharing your experience with us here. Can you tell us a little bit about the origin of your name? How did, how did you um, choose All Heart Inspirations? <laughs> I, I knew that, I, you know, one of my core values um, that I anchor my work in um, is actually love. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of them. It is just, it is up there with vulnerability. It is up there with community and connection. And so from the beginning, I was like, all right, is it like, what's the name of the business? Is it like local love? Is it this? Um, I was playing, I'm Haitian. Um, I'm a Haitian American. And so I was also playing around with like, can I phase in my Creole? Um, language to come up with a name. Um, but I also know that however I do this work, um, even if it's not my best day, I'm going to show up with what's in my heart. I'm going to mm. be honest with what's happening here. And so I knew I wanted the word like heart in the name. Um, and then one day last year on Valentine's Day, um, my friend Audrey, her son Oscar, loves Valentine's Day. And so she posted a photo of him and he had a t-shirt on and it said, all heart, all heart, all heart, like just rippling over each other on his t-shirt. And I was like, that's it. I'm like, that's my name. I was like, cause I'm like, I want the word heart, but how do you do that? And it's not too cheesy. And I go, but that's what this is. I am showing up with all heart, like mm. all heart, my energy, my spirit, my lived experiences, and then I Googled it. And then there's this big medical company out of California that's called All Heart. And I was like, okay, like I need like one more word. So that like, and then, and then I was like, inspirations, like All Heart Inspirations. I, I hope that if anyone is collaborating with me, if anybody is attending one of my offerings, whether virtually or physically, they feel inspired because I'm showing up with All Heart. I'm inviting the room to show up with All Heart. Um, and so I hope I leave them with just a little something that helps them have just a little bit more spark before they had entered that offering with me. Mm. And so that's how it started. But like Oscar Redman, <laughs> I was like, I can't wait to like physically see that family again. Cause I'm like, I'm bringing him like a lot of airheads and, all, you know, <laughs> you know, I even like, you know, you know, cause it, it, that's, I love the beauty that a little human actually helped me affirm what my story, my name should be. Um, mm. I think of him and his family and the relationship that I have with her mother, who's a special person to me. Um, and so I'm thankful for that. And I love the story behind that. Thank you. That's so great. You know, it's in always incredible to me how we can draw inspiration from um, what might be main mundane experiences in our lives, but as we collect them together and reflect on them, they can be the most powerful elements of, of our becoming or our, our being and so that you are able to like see a t-shirt and connect it to your reason for being and your sense of purpose is <laughs> so powerful and exciting and thank you Oscar uh, because we're all benefiting right now um, from that fantastic little t-shirt and and message um, you mentioned this a little bit in your beginning but uh, storytelling has such a powerful history do you have figures in your personal life who helped to spark your interest in storytelling or helped you to mentor your, who helped to mentor you as you developed your storytelling craft? Um, you know, growing up, as I said, being in the Haitian culture, like I think something that I've always enjoyed about my Haitian community is how we literally can just sit around, whether it's a table, breaking bread or like hanging out on the patio, but we can just tell stories all night. Like it's, it's just all about being in community um, and sharing pieces of, of who we are. And so I felt like I grew up seeing that. Um, my dad also um, is a Haitian DJ personality in our community. And so witnessing my dad as I grew up, um, helping to connect with the people like over the radio, and he would like pull my sister in to like do little snippet recordings for him. And cool. I'm like, oh, dad, I'm trying to like head out to go hang out with my friends. Like, just come here, I just need to record your voice real quick. Like say this radio station, <laughs> like take that we love it. I'm like, okay. And I just think it's like, wow, like these little things that were happening in my childhood, right? And 
um, different involvements that I had um, in high school, whether it was like peer ministry or, you know, when I was in college, like different involvements, it was always about telling a story. Like when I was a new student orientation leader at Stonehill College, welcoming new students to campus, like they, they're quite, what is it like here? And you have to tell a story. You tell your story, you tell the campus's story. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of my biggest influencers in particular, um, the job that I worked at um, went before coming to Vermont at the College of the Holy Cross, um, it's a Jesuit um, school. And my mentors there, um, Brenda Hounsel Sullivan and Christine Goodwin, um, had invited me to participate um, in, a in a lot of retreats with them. And retreats were all anchored in this thread of, we need to empower our students to tell their story. Mm -hmm. I think so often we play down the power of our of, of what youth have to tell us. And so the whole mission was you, you have stories, you have lived experiences and we want you to share them. And so I, that was a part of the, the code. That was a part of the way that we did the work there. Even as a conduct officer, when I worked there, like even in a judicial hearing, the student comes to you initially because you know they got documented for an open container in the hallway, but also like, how are you? How's this person? Mm going like is there homesickness like yeah. and that's how I would get through in my judicial conduct to really connect with a student you know like we're here about this but there's so much more to you than this disciplinary thing that's in this folder and so I worked there for almost seven years and so when I moved out to Vermont um you know I worked at the University of Vermont but something was like missing I'm like what is it and I'm like it's the story piece and I tried my best to leave that into the work that I was doing at UVM when I could. Um, but I, you know, I would hit some hard blocks with it. And it wasn't until I took um, a storytelling class at the Flynn um, with Sue Schmidt, um, who is our, you know, amazing storyteller in our Burlington community. She's our moth, the moth liaison. And being in that class and then working with Sue to help advocate for a storytelling class at the Flynn Theater, specifically for. Um, people of color from our BIPOC community. I taught that class for the first time and it just reminded me of my purpose again. I kind of had forgotten, kind of getting caught in the hamster wheel of UVM and what my job was supposed to be. And um, I was like, this is what I need to be doing with my life. And so when I taught that class, um, I was like, I think I'm done with higher ed. I, like, I, like, this is what I want to do. Like, because I got so much joy out of 90 minutes holding a circle with folks. And mm. so I started to create a path on how I can make that be my everyday. How could I make my everyday be anchored in people and connection and story and affirmations and vulnerability? Because I think often I felt like, especially as a woman, as a Black woman, given too much like, it was kind of like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, like, don't mistake these tears as weakness. This is not what this is about. Like, these tears is that we are not showing up right now and we can do better as a community around this particular topic. Um, this is anger here. Like, this is um, you not helping me be the best version of ourselves for our students. And so I just wanted to align myself with work that allowed us to, like, be comfortable with those and, and, and empower us to, to to have those feelings and to live authentically in that way. Mm. It sounds to me like you're really taking away the barriers for learning by connecting with people's humanity, mm -hmm. you know, like really tapping into what it is that's their true story to help them um, experience, uh, you know, unlock what is real for them and, and um, free them, uh, you know, to share their story, to connect with people, to, uh, step outside of what, you know, we all have what we, society or we ourselves, um, cage ourselves in, in the stories that we tell ourselves. And so asking those questions or prompting people to share their stories in, in a vulnerable but empowered way, I think is so powerful. So I'm really glad that you've um, recognized that as, as your purpose and that you're helping other people to, um, to see theirs. Yeah, because I think so often we experience things and, you know, I'd see someone be like, that was life changing. And I'm like, but why? 
or mm-hmm. like, you know, and I'm like that, that person, but why is that person important? Like, what's the, so what behind it? Like, let's unpack that. Yeah. And then I think it just gives more meaning to you about your experience that you're saying this was moving or this was hard for some reason, but just being able to process the why behind that. Right. Connect uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that word, like just uncaging as you use Karen, like, yes, like open it up, like literally. And I think that's why all heart really needed to be in this business title because we yeah. want us to open ourselves up. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> that's powerful. So your business is six and a half months old. Yeah, she's a baby. Ooh, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's she's incredible. She's a baby that was walking at like four weeks. <laughs> but you're already creating huge collaborations. And uh, how, can I ask about how you initiated those or how do people connect with you? How did, how did you get those started? Oh my God, I know. I reflect back and I'm like, did we really do this, this, and this? And I'm like, yeah, you did, girl. Like, In a well, pandemic too. I mean, that is... <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, like, I want... So some of it, I want to believe, you know, prior to owning All Heart Inspirations, I've always been someone who is who's community oriented, you know? Like, um, I would walk into, you know, different places and try to have relationships with who that exists there, you know? Like, ordering a beer at zero gravity and like being like, how are you? Like, what's your name? Like, you know, kind of thing or whatever. And so I feel like once I had the business, this entity, I was able to kind of go back to these places that I've always been like a customer or community member in and be like, hey, like, I like y'all a lot. And I and I feel like I'm about to do big things. <laughs> do you want to get on this train? With yes. Us? Like that literally was the email that I sent Matt, the owner of Zero Gravity and their marketing director, Emma. Like I was like, I've worked with you in another entity, but I would love to work with you as Farine, you know, or um, my August 1st collaboration uh, that had to do with their posts that they were making during that month of June when everything was, you know, going down with George Floyd. And Mm -hmm. I saw August 1st name that hey, like we want to be better about being, being a community bakery. And, you know, if there are BIPOC folk out there that want to like utilize the space when we're not in hours, like reach out to us, like let's figure yeah. that out. And so I did that and I reached out and Jody was like, so like amazing to sit down with me. And I went there simply to say, can I teach a class here? Uh, Sasha was in that class. Um, and uh, and then Jody was like, what what other what other dreams do you have for me? Like what else? And I was like, well, you know, I've always wanted to pair storytelling with food. And she's like, well, you can use our kitchen. And then before you know it, we're doing a tour of the kitchen. And she's like, would this work for you? And I am trying so hard not to be like this giddy five year old because my five year old me was, was like screaming inside. And I'm like, oh yeah, I think this will work. You know, six burners, all these. Stories. Yeah, I, I think. We'll this will work and I'm like oh my god are you about to like host a three-course meal that you're gonna cater and perform at the place where you just come and get coffee and sit and um the cool story behind that August 1st was actually the place where um me and Sue and I we had met when I reached out to her to tell her about my experience being the only person of color in her class and what like we had that conversation at an August 1st table and kind of came up with a plan to how to engage the Flynn in taking on this initiative so so many roads lead back to kind of the places that I've been collaborating with um and then some of them are just spontaneous as hell like I was sailing one day because I chose to celebrate my first day of launching my business to go sailing on the Whistling Man Company. And as I was on that boat, I was just talking with my partner and I'm like, oh, this is such a stunning background. Can you imagine the storytelling that could happen on this boat? And it just so happened the person sitting across from me, Sean, was uh, best friends with the owner of Whistling Man. And he was like, tell me more about this storytelling. And before you know it, we exchanged numbers. We're having a beer at Zero Gravity. And then we're meeting at August 1st with Hannah, the owner of Whistling Man. And she's like, let, let me like collaborate with you. Let's take two sales off my schedule and give them to you, Kareen, and do wow. what you want with them. And so it's community for sure. You know, I can't do this alone. We, we don't do anything in our lives alone. It's, it's a village. It's a collective village. And so My success is also because folks are reaching out to either empower me, give me resources, share spaces, make a donation. All of those things are helping 
the launch of this um, first year of All Heart Inspirations be what it's manifesting into. And I'm so deeply thankful um, for people rooting for me um, or past colleagues of other colleges who are like, now that you're not in higher ed, like come do something with my students. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, obviously I believe community is really powerful. I wouldn't be here doing this if I wasn't fully invested in that, but you couldn't have known that the two of the companies that you just referenced, um, I personally have a deep heart connection to. Um, the night before my wedding, we had our, our dinner at August 1st with all of our closest family. And then um, the night after we got married, we went on the Whistling Man for a sunset uh, tour on the lake. So. It's like a life change. I had never gone sailing before. I was like, this is magical. <laughs> <laughs> and wishing on sunsets and just leaving behind what you no longer want to hold on to at the dock and sailing back in and making new intentions for yourself. Yeah, I love that. We connect over those. Uh, <laughs> well, just those examples, amazing. <laughs> uh, but, but really, I mean, community can be so powerful. And you talked about ways that companies, businesses, even small businesses can show up um, in with intention and have a really positive impact on another business that's just starting off. So the offer of using the kitchen at August 1st, like that's a resource that when they're, when it's, you know, shuttered and they're not using it, that's amazing that you're able to tap into that. And if, if um, listeners have a resource or I invite listeners to think about the resources that you have access to and how you might offer them in ways that benefit other business owners um, and that we can come together and particularly support BIPOC business owners that are launching new businesses or, um, you know, really working to keep their business in a pandemic because the resources that we have available um, there, there are great challenges to equity and, and justice in our systems. And so if we can really, as business owners, think of ourselves on, on a platform um, and, and a stage and, and use our businesses as a, a storytelling space for how we can connect and support other business owners and, and individuals uh, to access opportunity and uh, to grow their business and tap into their reason for being. So I'm really glad that that was, um, extended to you that opportunity was extended to you and that you were able to walk into that kitchen and see like I have a future here that's yeah, that's know. so powerful yeah they're my little family I'm like because the thing about being your own business owner I don't have a team anymore like I worked in higher ed for 15 years like I would be working with student leader groups as large as 50 you know and so I'm like this is cool but I kind of like loving a place to go to and you like know the people in there yeah. you know I've been you know, I, I've been holding some things in my personal life with my dad being in the hospital and sick. And so to have the chef at only August 1st and the manager put aside like their jerk chicken, because it was like on the menu last week and I was quarantining and to drop that off at my house with my chocolate salted cookies that I love from there. Like it, it's, it, it's more than just the business part. It's yeah. about, it's the human part on it. Feeling seen and heard. Yeah, and I really, um, I really am, inviting you know what does it mean to be a, a business in the community like what does it mean to be a community business what does yes. it mean to really engage in folks in this way and it goes so far it goes so far and there's reciprocity that can go back and forth and yet we're thriving we thrive better in that kind of model yes and I, one of the joys that i'm experiencing experiencing is that seeing lots of different businesses there are so many ways that we can do this and we just have to keep thinking creatively and reinventing our practices and our processes and inviting those those questions of how we can show up for each other so um, thank you for giving those examples so that we can continue to think about that and and act on it and and, and make a difference for people in our community um you talked about food yes <laughs> um <laughs> can you talk about food and scent and the way that they they pull into conjuring memory and um how you're tapping into storytelling through people's taste buds. Um, yeah. What's the story you're telling through your work with food? I love food. <laughs> I love to eat. I remember my partner being like, I knew you were the one. You were drinking a 25 ounce beer and eating wings with your hands. And I'm like, <laughs> I guess that is me, you know? Um, you know, for me, uh, when I was, again, talking about my Haitian culture, you know, I had the honor to go to Haiti a couple of years ago. And then I did it again two years ago. 
And when I was there, um, finally visiting this land that I had never been to, but it felt so familiar because that's where all my like lineage comes from. Um, the food, like I couldn't, I'm like, was my favorite part the food or was my favorite part like the crystal clear Caribbean sea? I go back and forth, but some days I'm like, oh, that food was pretty epic. Like it was amazing, right? And and just the intentionality. I always have always thought food is such a labor of love. You know, like growing up, we didn't have much, you know, but what I always deeply appreciated was we always figured out how to make one more seat for somebody at the table. If someone dropped by unexpectedly, you know, like my parents um, would work all the time. And so I would do all my holiday dinners with another Haitian family. And I just always loved how they would just bring me to their table and the connection that we would have over food. And so for me, when I was thinking about this thing about storytelling and when I was talking with Jody, I said, the reason why I've always fantasized about food and storytelling is because I need us to slow down. We are so go, 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 go. And sometimes like as a mother, as a parent, um, I would just inhale my food and like, because I'm just trying to get to the next thing with my kid. And, um, and it's like, we need to slow down. And I think food when done in a very intentional way can invite us to do that. Um, and Haitian food has so many layers to it. It's not something that you like make in 30 minutes. Um, it can be a day process, you know, you're marinating your meats like possibly days before. Um, and so I love the idea of pairing like a three course catered meal um, and pairing it with stories and the way that it would work with my feed your soul events. That's what it's called is that I'm literally trying to feed your soul like physically, mentally, spiritually, and throughout the three course meal, I pair each course with a particular story. And then I have reflective prompts to go with that story. So as we transition into like the first course, like I give the audience questions to think about as they eat mm -hmm. and I would explain what they're eating. I'd explain where the ingredients came from or like the scent. I'm like, do you, do you taste the lime zest in that rum cake? Like just getting people to understand that there's even a story in the food you eat. Um, there's a culture behind it. Um, there's purpose behind it, you know, like an apple is not just an apple. When I moved to Vermont, I was like, I just thought there was like one kind of apple before. And then I came here and I tasted a honey crisp for the first time. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, what is this? Like, it was magic, you know, and realizing there are so many types of apples and they do so many different things. There's a story behind each kind of apple. And so I think that's what I was trying to invite people to do. And I think more importantly, I get to share my Haitian culture through the food part, because I can explain to you if we have soup jumu, which is a squash based soup that we eat on New Year's Day, I can tell you that the reason why we eat that soup every New Year's Day is because that's our Independence Day. And when we were colonized by the French, that was like a vegetable that we didn't have access to. We were forced to pick it and grow it, but we weren't allowed to like in, 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 um, indulge in ourselves. So when we gained our independence, we made that soup, we made it in abundance. Um, and um, people would go house to house having soup jumu on New Year's Day. And so um, there's a story behind that soup. It's not just soup, um, it's our freedom, it's our story. Um, and so I love how storytelling and food can pair beautifully that way um, to just give more intentionality to the experience that we're having collectively. Thank you. Uh, just hearing you talk about the preparations and the way that you're helping people to reflect on their experience and be mindful. Um, I, it, it's an invitation to think about intention mm -hmm. and impact and experience and how when we go into those, um, each of our thoughts and the way that we connect with other people, it is really important to be slow and mindful and connected and think about how all of those elements come together to create our experience and to give us meaning in our lives. And if we just rush through and like do our to-do list, you don't have that satisfaction of connecting with a story, the purpose, the, the meaning so that you have identified that as something that we culturally hunger for and offered it as a food. <laughs> 
you are brilliant. I can't, how can we, um, how can we order? I know, and I know due to the, the parameters right now in Vermont, they've seized, but they had happened on August, September and October. Um, and the, the, the hope is, is that once we can kind of open back up, that's my food pop-up location. And once a month I'll do a feed your soul. And um, I change the theme each time. So like the September one was dedicated space for mothers. And, mm -hmm. for, um, and so that was an affinity space. And it was so nice to like, just give mothers, like I'm here for you, like put your feet up, you slow down and let's talk about what it means to be moms, but we're also so much more than that. Um, the, the, the October one was in collaboration with the Flynn Theater and it was about what does it mean to, to, find, to actually follow through with the purpose you want in life. And, you know, I talked about like what it went from dreaming about having my own business about storytelling to put it into action and, and, and how I came to be. Um, so I try to flip it up. Like I'd love to do one one day where it's actually just like all like little humans in that space. Like, and so I'm just excited that I have a home. I'm excited of how um, amazing August 1st is supportive around, around this. And I, and, I, and I look forward to when we can open that, that back up because um, it was just such a magical space. Um, and, I, and I'd always be like, all right, this meal's only gonna be for like two hours and like three hours later, like I'm like, and people are like, it's all good. Cause I think they allowed themselves to just like fall into the seat and relax a yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's great that you're creating that space. If, if um, it takes a lot to launch a business and you've done this all in a really short span of time on, on your own solo. So how are you like, putting together the websites, the systems, the communication, like what's, what's your process? How do you make it in the magic happen? Oh my gosh. Oh man. This is like, you're everything. Like when you're a solo person, like I, I went from working in higher education where I had like a business manager and someone who did my budget and like all of, to like, everything is me. And I'm like, okay it's like wait oh, oh the posting that's me oh like balancing like the receipts that's me too and i'm like all right all right i think definitely having 15 years in higher education really helped you know like when you are managing programs that are catering to 3,000 students um, and you're hosting events and you're welcoming this class. Um, there was a lot of transferable skills that came from that. Um, even supervising college students who were your social media interns, they taught me so much. And like back in October, one of my past interns was at an event of mine. And I was like, I just want to tell you, Haley, you're the reason why I'm figuring out how to do all this stuff on Instagram and Instagram story and what to do, like, because I would watch them and they would, you know, all they, they did. And I'm like, this feels so flawless. And so their technique and, you know, their processes, I, I bring those into how I do my social media um, for all heart inspirations. Um, and then some of it is just being really real and transparent. Like I'm like, sometimes I'm like, I'm making shit up. And if you have a better way of how I can do this, like, just let me know. And just like asking, like, so I'm just curious. I saw you said something about it, like a license. Like, what, like what's that? And I'm like, oh, good to know. Okay, I'm on that. I'm going to apply for that, you know? And so um, how do we allow ourselves to be okay with, we don't know everything. And I don't have this all together. But I, what, what I do have is the, is the heart. I have the intentionality. Like, no one can train me or teach me how to do that. That is what comes naturally. The other stuff I'll learn. And so for example, right now I'm taking a 10 week business course through the, the Women of Center for Enterprise. And uh, it's a 10 week course on food and agriculture. And oh. so like I'm putting myself in spaces to get some more of the information. And it's been so helpful, um, you know, Back at UVM, I, I would have someone design marketing for me all the time for my program. So when I left, I was like, oh, I'm gonna reach out to Jess to create my logos because Jess is brilliant. And, 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 and being able to work with her on that because I know what a logo means. It's your branding, like it's your stamp. And so being able to like make sure that it came out exactly how I wanted. Um, so it's that's another piece that has been a village um, and just kind of, uh, my, you know, Isora Lithgow was somebody who um, started, I watched her start her own entrepreneurial business. And so when I first started, 
she was like, Farine, do you have a website? Like, she's like, how are you gonna sell tickets for Feed Your Soul? And I'm just looking at her and she goes, do you need me to help you? I go, yes. <laughs> and so before you know it, she's like, I bought, I got your domain. Like I've set up a, like a default. And then once you settled, you can go in. And so like she originally set up the website for me and then taught me how to play around with it. And then I was able to go in and then make it feel like authentically me. Um, but it just took another person empowering me. Like I always say, like, you know, women, em empowered women, empower women. And I have to say women have been a huge part of my success with all heart inspirations, mm. the generosity with their resources, with their time, with their advice, with just like checking in, like showing up with sunflowers the morning of my launch in order to just like ground me. I'm like, thank you, Naima. Like I needed that, you know? And so um, I'm thankful for that. And there's still so much more to learn. Um, and that's a part of it. Like this isn't going to happen overnight. Um, you know, like I've been a homeowner for six years and there's so many projects that I thought would be all done by now. Nope, they're not. Cause it just, it's time. And there's no rush with this. And a, a big part of me, when I left higher ed, it, it was due to the toxic capitalist culture that can exist in that system. And so I am very comfortable now with being like, I don't have all the answers and no one's gonna, I, don't judge me for it. Like, and that is okay. Or like, I'm not gonna just keep mass producing just because like, I'm gonna take my time with this. I'm gonna make love with this business. Like where there's a lot of foreplay happening with it. And then at the end, like, it's gonna be like this ridiculous, it has been ridiculous orgasms over and over with like- oh, <laughs> It's mind blowing. Like, yeah, like it has. And it's like, I'm just like, you know, like just tenderly um, holding it and moving through it. Um, but also like people like in our community, like Maria from Cafe Mama Wana and Candace Taylor from Conscious Homestead. Like we have some bomb ass woman entrepreneurs in particular in our community. And the pandemic made me slow down and see what was out there. And it was like, I just really understood what it meant to be local, what it meant to support local and, and just doing that. And so I'm, I'm thankful for that. So I observe, I watch. I, 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 I breathe in the talents of others. I witness their greatness and reflect on what about it that I appreciate, but what about it is naturally mine because I can only be Farine. I can't be Candace Taylor, right? Like, um, and, it's, and it's a beautiful way to, you know, pull from all these different pieces to kind of create what people see right now with All Heart Inspirations. That resonates so loudly for me, or just strongly for me because um, I think it's so much about a mindset and it, you know, we're kind of cultured to think of being competitive and like it's mine or it's yours or you're going to get to my audience or I'm going to get to my audience. But what I'm finding is there is just such beauty in coming together and being inspired by each other and drawing from the best of what we can offer as individuals, like learning from each other, connecting with each other and, and drawing upon that inspiration to strengthen ourselves, our community, our connection, and, and um, expand the, the, the way that we think of success, uh, you know, what, what it means to be a business owner, you can have a very big impact uh, in a community, and you can also be successful financially. You, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, like Scrooge, uh, you know, stealing all the money from all of his underpaid uh, workers. Um, you know, you can you can have a positive influence in the way that you show up for other people. So your examples of um, your example of the sunflower was really powerful to me because sunflowers are a flower that track the sun. Yeah. They they follow the light, and if we can do that as community members, as business owners, and put our energy, put our focus to what brings us energy, what gives us life then we'll be a field of sunflowers shining for each other. And the field of sunflowers is just so powerful. And it, it stops you in your tracks when, when you come across that scene, because yeah. it's not just one, it's everyone together. And, and that's the beauty. And so I'm just so excited um, about the way that you're sharing your story and you're connecting with other people um, and, and inspiring that mindset of, of connection and inspiration and, skill building and learning because we're all learning on the fly and to pretend that we're perfect um, we'd be fakes so thank you for for that vulnerability and sharing that um this is such a challenging time in the world for so many reasons 
um, when you're feeling unsettled, how do you connect to you, your sense of purpose, your well-being? How do you keep your nervous system cool, calm, and collected? What are some insights that you have to share about just staying in touch with your sense of purpose and um, working through it? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's moment by moment. I mean, sometimes it feels like minute by minute or hour by hour. Um, and there needs to be a deep level of honesty with self, you know, like, so I know right now because of what's happening with my dad, he's in the hospital, like, you know, like I, there's only so much bandwidth that I have right now. And I'm, and I'm so transparent with that in the spaces that I'm a part of, because it allows me to relax a little bit to let y'all know, even though I'm here, my heart is really distracted because my dad has been in the hospital for like 19 days now, you know, and, and, and just naming that, you know, like, and just, we don't have to dwell on it, but I just need you to know. So you can, in, you know, what's influencing my lens right now, you know, it's influencing how I'm moving through life. And, um, and I, you know, I've, I've, I've always been very transparent with folks about the journey that I have had around my anxiety and my depression, you know, and that is something that I've been working on for a few years now. And uh, that being honest about that narrative is what keeps me grounded in my purpose, you know, like that is what allows me to be able to uh, you know, cipher through the, through the noise, how to quiet it down. What am I really needing to pay attention to? What's urgent, what's not, um, you know, showing up and, you know, at that mother's dinner, for example, um, my heart was really heavy for that because that was right when the, the verdict around Breonna Taylor came out and, 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 the, and, the, and the, no accountability with the police. So how could I be hosting this mother's dinner and not acknowledge like, you know, there are folks out there, for example, Brianna Taylor's mom, like she, if they, if she was in this space right now, the loss that she has because of what happened to her daughter being, you know, like murdered, you know, like by, by, by the, by the police while she was sleeping, you know, like, so we can't hold what it means to be in motherhood without also acknowledging beyond me as a mom, what's happening, like, collectively like in our in our country like in our world and and trying to find the balance with how to how to have the synergy between those two places you know um just real talk and then some days current it's like it's like just freeing I just need you to simply try to shower take your meds and drink water today like those are your first three steps and then like let's figure out where we're going next but like just start there you know hierarchy of needs yeah, yeah you know and it's i've really been prioritizing to put my mask on first like being a mom it was so weird to think of you first like you think of your kids first you think of you know even just when i was working in higher ed like i would put work before me like all of and what happened was i got really sick I, I got really sick physically and I got really sick mentally to the point where I had to take leave from work for almost two months to like really tend to myself. And, and so I came out of that being like this, no work is worth it to like, to kill yourself in this way. Like, I'm, you know, I say it in quotes, but it was like, I was looking at myself in the mirror each day, but I was like, who is this person looking at me? I don't recognize you. Like, who are you? Like, where's your glow? Like, you, you, like you, you're tired, like you're burning at both ends. Like, what is this about for me? Like nothing is worth it. And so putting my mask on first has been a huge change um, in my relationships with my partner, with my kids, like being to be like, mama needs to sleep for the next like couple of hours. And then I'll be in a space where we can kick it all night and, and pop a tent in the living room and do all of that. But if I just need to deposit into me first and my therapist would talk about freeing deposits and what does that look like? You know, sometimes we only have time for a five minute deposit and that's okay. So right after I'm done with this interview I'm going to go make pour over coffee and I'm gonna take my time to make that coffee and I'm gonna be grounded. And that's gonna just give me like warmth for like the next like 10 minutes right and then sometimes I can before I would like go to top notch for the day you know and so it, it you know there's different ranges how to deposit but we need to tend to ourselves like that and it's not just self-care it's community care like it's not just on me to tend to myself to thrive 
the people around me need to also keep an eye on me. I need to keep an eye on my people too. Like it's a, it goes hand in hand because some days people don't have the energy to do self-care. So the community care comes in as a catch net to get them where they need to be, to move them to a point where then eventually maybe they can take empowerment and ownership over how they need to show up. Um, but it's just real talk, it's realness. Like I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, all right, universe, what are you trying to tell me today? I, I you know, when I'm driving in the car and a song comes on, I'm like, oh, is the universe trying to tell me? I, I look for signs everywhere. Like, you know, like I remember at the lake this summer, my, my floaty just wouldn't stay where I needed it to stay. Like my tube just kept, and I was like, what is this about? And I go, that's life. I can keep trying to put the tube here, but if the tube wants to go that way, it's going to go that way. And maybe it's going that way because it wants me to see my view here at the lake in a different way. So maybe just be curious about that, you know? And so I'm always looking for signs um, and I'm always um, just trying to see what is the, how do I fit into where I need to be right now in this universe? And um, things talk back to me, you know, like whether it's through people, um, whether it's through messages, whether through it's a post that I, you know, like I remember being in Trader Joe's and all of a sudden Tom Girl made a post and I was like, oh my God, I so needed to read this right now. Um, and so, you know, I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to slow down. I don't do it gracefully all the time. You know, sometimes I can default back into that go, go, go. And then, so for example, I did a farmer's market in December and I was so like, okay, it's my first farmer's market. Like I gotta make sure like I'm, I'm on point. And as I'm loading up, setting up my table, I totally tripped and I was holding like, uh, like 20 jars of my Peakley's cold slaw. And I like tried to gracefully fall, but my, my daughter Melody's like, mom, you need to calm down. It's going to be fine. I go, I know. Like, so here's my seven year old being like, you're like doing this, like slow down. This day's supposed to be fun. Like it's going to be all good. And, and I'm like, yes, you're right. I'm, I'm take off the pressure. Like the hardest part was just to get here. I'm here now, like, no, this is easy. Like, just put the products out. And if, if people want them, they want them. And if they don't, like, more leftovers for you, you know? But it's, it's hard. You can just, you can get caught up in like, I'm supposed to do this, this, and this. And then that's then my anxiety, it spikes. So for my self-regulation, I need to slow down. I need to breathe a little bit more. I need to have boundaries. I need to say no, even though it might be something that I really wanna do, but it's not worth the energy that it's going to withdraw out of me. So for now, no, thank you. And just trying to have a better balance with all of that. Mm. Have, understanding your own boundaries and setting up structures to support your well-being is so powerful as an individual, as a business owner, as a parent. I think that's so relatable. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about a few young people who are inspiring you, Oscar, Haley, your daughter, um, some business owners. Are there particular people who are helping you to stay in this mindset? Um, how, who, would, who are you looking to um, yeah, as inspiration? Some of it is like the, the, like the products that, you know, Candace Taylor makes with her tinkertures or Juniper Creative. Like I like I like I love those. <laughs> they're they're really helpful. Um, and then they're just friends, you know. I always talk about what it meant when I was going through some of my darker spells a couple of years ago. The friends that stayed with me through it. It's very easy for people to love you through the good times. Like when it's rainbows, when it's clear skies, it's so easy for people to be in that mindset with you. But who is weathering out the storm with you, you know? And so for me, when I went through that, there were a few people that just really stepped up in what it meant to be with me in the hard stuff, like to lean in to the, the, the hard conversations and the, you know, the, the dark thoughts, whatever it may be. And so I keep those folks tenderly close to me. And when I feel like I might be spiraling, I reach out or they've already reached out to me, like, you know, and so there's an understanding that exists there. Um, so that, so that's really, really important, you know, like, if someone asks, how are you feeling? Really trying to trust that I think that person tenderly wants to know, and giving them how I'm really doing, and that happened last week, someone texted, and they were just like, brain, like, wow, like, how are you? And 
I like answered it honestly, which then caused me to like cry for the rest of the day. Cause I was finally allowing myself to process like, oh my gosh, you went to Massachusetts, your dad, this blah, blah, blah. But I needed that. I needed that cathartic release. And it happened because a friend genuinely asked, how are you? And they allowed me to write back in the text and they kept responding back to me and engaging with me. And I needed that. I was so thankful for me giving me without even knowing that they were doing that for me, but that's really important. And so I try to be honest with the folks who I know will hold my story and my tender moments deep. Mm. And they are my accountability people, you know, and I, I appreciate that. Sasha, who's on this call, that's someone um, who we, you know, there's a group that interesting and be able to be like, I can't do this right now. And they're like, it's okay. You don't have to do this right now. Um, or like, you got this or like, you know, oh, okay. Cause as you said, imposter syndrome and all that stuff, like it can just creep up like this, you know, one moment I'm like, I'm so bomb, black girl magic. Like I'm so brilliant in my stuff. And then the next day I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going to make it? Like, is this business even going to thrive in this white state Vermont? And then, you know, you got your friends who are like, yes, it will, because you are you and you, and you have a gift and, and we need the gift. And this is important. This is so needed right now. And I'm like, okay, all right, we're going to keep hustling then. Like, I'm going to keep doing this your reflections here, just sharing how people have helped you to feel seen and heard. It strikes me that that is exactly what you're doing with your work with other people, what you've done for people in your higher ed experience, asking, you know, what's the root of your story, your, the root of your experience that's um, causing you to show up in this way, whether it was a student who was, you know, having a, a challenging behavior or, um, you know, challenges in your business, like, Un challenging in your emotions, like the experience, the unpacking of our experiences with intention and holding them and being mindful and taking that slow time, as you described, um, is it just sounds like you have really embedded this practice in, in your life and in your business and that you're helping people to unlock their stories in a way that supports you you too, you know, you're modeling for people what supports your well being, and that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, one question I have for you is how can we show up for you? What are you, what are your goals for your business? What, in what way can we support your growth? Yeah, I think, you know, something about all heart inspirations and how I want to keep doing this work is I've deeply enjoyed collaborating with people. Like, I, I can do stuff solo, but I, I love the ways that I've been able to be like, hey, so-and-so, like, what would it look like for us to, you know, mash those things up, you know? And so I'm always kind of looking for ideas or folks have ideas or like connecting me with folks like, hey, friend, like this cooking thing, like my friend like owns a yurt, like, up in, like, like the new kingdom and they've been wanting to like do some gatherings in there when we can, like, I'm going to Next, y'all, like you cool if I like email the two of you, and that actually did happen. And so, like, I, and so I'm like, okay, like cool kind of thing or whatever. And so I think that's the big thing. Like, I deeply appreciate you know the you know people like following me on Instagram and you know social media, whatever it may be, sharing different things, content that I'm putting out there, um, coming to things if that if you have the bandwidth and the energy to do so. Um, you know, like it's it's been nice to see re repeated people, and I'm like, oh, you're like an all heart fan, like you're like you keep popping into different spaces. I I love that, you know, or just a newbie or like a one time thing. Um, it's 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 or just you know, as you were sharing earlier, sometimes it's not just donations are beautiful, and I love if people can do that, but sometimes we just have different skills we can offer to each other, you know, like. Hi, I'm a photographer. Like, do you want me to like take your photos? And you know, Renee is on this call and she took my photos of me and my daughter at the holiday at the farmer's market at Hotel Vermont. And she just reached out and she's like, hey, I'm just curious. Like, this is just the skill set of mine. Which, and I was like, that would be awesome. Like, thank you. And so it, those things go so far because I was so in go mode that day that when I got those photos in my email, I was able to like actually really process the beauty of what it was like to do my first market and the candids of me with my daughter. And I'm like, I'm so happy I have that, you know? And 
that's a gift for me to have those photos, but then I can also then like use them with some marketing. And so that generosity, and you know, and I try to do that as well, you know, like what can I do to, to pay it forward? What can I do to show gratitude and, 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 and give that back into the community? Um, so I love that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the people, I, I wanna be a community business. I'm not trying to do this in isolation. Um, I feel we can make bigger ripples um, if we align our passions and our skill sets and we complement what we're bringing um, to the team. And so it's been really cool to do that. Um, and I look forward to seeing how those will continue to evolve, new ones as well as returning back. Like, I cannot wait to sail again this summer and do storytelling on the boat. I got a postcard um, from Captain Diddy, um, Hannah, and it was like, see you on the water this summer. And I'm like, Yes, like I cannot wait. You know, I can't wait till we can be in communion. I can continue doing feed your souls when we can get back there. And so I love the relationships that are continuing to grow. And I'm excited about what will be the new ones that can blossom and, and what that could look like. Um, so it's it's an it's an open journey. I'm trying hard not to box myself into it needs to look and feel this way. Cause that's what I did for so long in higher ed and it got in the way of the creativity. It got in the way of savoring the joy. It limited, um, and then it, it it made like like this is the bar that I need to keep sustaining. And it's like remove that, and like it's just an open canvas. Like let's just see what happens today. Oh, thank you. We have a lot of questions in the <laughs> Q and A. Cool. Um, so let's see. Um... Uh, first, we have a big fan of the rum cake. You're, <laughs> where can we find that is well, one. <laughs> oh, yes. I After holiday orders for December, I was like, I'm not making any more cakes till February. I was like, you know, it was just such a new experience. I had done like a soft one during the Thanksgiving time. But December, I really got into it. And I was like, whoa, like my kitchen, it was just like my family was like, what is happening? Wow. Like. And it was so funny because uh, my friend has a key to our house and I had texted her and I'm like, I'm so tired. I just did my last round and she keyed in and she found me on the floor and I was just sitting, lying on the ground <laughs> with like flour on my face. And I'm like, girlfriend, I am so tired. Like they got done, but wow. Like, so, um, but yes, there's so much love put into that cake. And um, I will, once I'm out of quarantine, I've been quarantined because I went to Massachusetts. I will get back into baking again um, for the community. And that's one of my favorite things to make. Like there is love in that cake. And I love hearing how much people are enjoying it um, because that cake is a labor of love for me. Um, so usually I just add um, inventory to my online store on my website and I'll announce it on my social media accounts. Like there's cake orders that people can take me up on if they want them. Um, but if there's a special cake order that folks need, people just email me. They're like, I okay. see you sold out, but I'm just curious. Like, can I, and you know- Make I, some I, magic happen. Yeah, you know, like I've made wedding cakes. Like for during the pandemic, I've done three cakes for wow. people still trying to get married and have intimate ceremonies. And I'm like, dude, this is a wedding cake for somebody? Like you want my rum cake to be your cake? Okay. All like, heart. Oh, I know, it's amazing. I'm, and I love that I can still give my love to somebody in a, in a product that then they go take and share with others. It's, it's, it's an awesome experience uh, to witness and to believe. Well, I think your work is nourishing. The, the stories, the intention, the mindset, the food <laughs> preparation and creation and, and the connection of bringing people uh, to their awareness to what it is that they're experiencing, I think is that's a gift. So <laughs> very cool. Um, one question, have you looked into school grants? You're wonderful and you present art. Oh, and you could present art online um, to students, the storytelling craft. Um, if, if that's one, one question or suggestion. Yeah. Have I looked into school grants? Yeah, like yeah. to to do this work with schools. Yeah, and so before, oh gosh, the pandemic really threw everything. <laughs> like I was, you know, a year ago, someone was taking my class who happened to work for the district. So we were talking about what this could look like. Like, what would it look like to have storytelling be one of the after school activities? Or what would that look like? And so right now schools are so like trying to do their thing. Like, and I know that that is a path that will, 
um, manifest. I just know it. Like, I know it will. I did have the opportunity in December uh, to do a storytelling um, workshop with the Horizon High School, which is the Horizon program, which is our alternative high school in Burlington. And so I love that. And I remember talking with, you know, uh, the the director and he's like, now that now that you're in the system, like, you know, it's like, oh, like we can see where this goes. Um, and but that's something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. And that's when I go back to like, um, what does it mean to be connected with different resources in the community? Like, so for example, my daughter's classroom this year, um, they wrote these where, I, where I'm from poems and the poems are so amazing. I'm like, fifth graders wrote these things? Like, they're awesome. And so I was talking about what would it look like for us to do something at the August 1st Bakery in the evening um, and have these students invite their family members and each of them get to share their poems and then I can just MC and host. Um, and so I was talking with Ms. Bloomer, I was talking with um, Mrs. Osaro about that. And I was like, you know, when we can hit the green light on this, like you just tell me and I will use my connections so that we can empower these students. Well, and so I'm having conversations with people. I think it's just like where it will fit in just right. I think right now the priority is just to get these students like act like getting getting done what needs to happen. But I do believe 110% that storytelling will be making its way in a more deep, intentional way in our local like Vermont community. And I am so excited to be a part of that. That's great. Fantastic. Uh, one suggestion related to that is when things settle and teacher uh, teaching artists can go back into the schools, one resource could be the Vermont Arts Council teaching artist grants. So oh. something for you to, to look into. <laughs> Um, and another comment that uh, they absolutely love your packaging. Uh, what what do you use for, for packaging? I write notes to people. <laughs> like I literally like, it's like a plain box. Like you know you're in um like you know if I read like I'll you know I use my markers and sometimes I'll put just different mantras or quotes on them. It kind of got too overwhelming with the holiday orders because there were just like so many. But just a handwritten. For, I could uh, just a handwritten of your name and me signing it like XOXO Farine. Um, so depending on like the energy, I, I try to pair because my whole idea was what would it look like if you got a food product and it came with a love note, like or if it came with a little affirmation. And so there are other ideas that I'm percolating on about what it would even look like to add um, mystery stories with my products. Like if I can write out like a few and then like when you get the cake, like there's a little like short story from me or what would it look like to like, you know, teach people words in Creole. Like, you know, like, so I'm wrapping my head around that. And, um, but I, you know, I do try to be intentional because again, all of those parts help uh, show the receiver love in some way like it's not just a food product it's how they received it you took the time to put my name on this packaging um you know like if it's someone that i deeply know just doing a like you go girl you got this you are enough like i've done that for particular people um and so yeah i love notes um i've always been so i keep all my notes like i have a basket of like any notes someone has written me like i keep it like i just can't throw them out um and so i think people see that coming into the way that i package um some of my goods the care. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Um, the link to the Vermont Arts Council grant information uh, was kindly dropped by Renee into the chat. So feel free to check that out. If anyone's interested in saving the chat, you can um, click the the ellipsis, the three dots, and you can save the chat there. Um, and I want to just take a moment really truly to thank you, Farine, for sharing your time, your story, um, your passion with us today. It has been such a privilege and an honor to share this space, to connect with you, to um, bring people together. You know, in, in the, this pandemic world, we crave connection. And so you have created that for us today and helped us to tap into our own experience uh, with a greater intention and mindset, I think is just, uh, I feel, very refreshed from this conversation and excited uh, to, to jump into the next parts of my day and um, and with care. So thank you for imparting your, your passion and, and mindset insights um, with us today. Yes. We, um, I also want to highlight your Instagram account, All Heart Inspirations. If you are not already a follower, please check out Farine's account. It's beautiful. You can also connect to her website, which is there. Um, and she'll be sharing pop-up events and activities that um, you can 
participate in orders or taste the beautiful food that she's creating. Mm -hmm. We also um, have a workshop coming up in February on the 25th. Bahrain's going to be leading a workshop for our members of this community to come together and learn how to share your story, um, tapping into skills and mindsets to help connect with people through storytelling. So if this um, session resonated with you, please join us in February the 25th at noon. Um, and it would be really great um, to continue this conversation conversation and, and keep building upon this momentum. Um, we have a Pivot and Thrive community meetup tomorrow at noon. Um, it's actually the same link as you had today. So if you like what you experienced here um, tomorrow, it'll be more of a dialogue just with the whole community or whoever's available. Um, bring your questions, your ideas, your inspirations, or just join for the community. It's a nice way to connect with people and um, just kind of reflect on the week and set some intentions for the next week. And check in uh, because many of us are solopreneurs. And so the opportunity to connect with each other and draw inspiration um, and build relationships is just really powerful. So I hope you'll think about joining um, for the session tomorrow at noon um, and also join our Pivot and Thrive online community. We've had a little bit of tech hiccups uh, as many of the people on the call will know uh, over the last 24 hours, but new members uh, should be able to join uh, without any issues. It's just um, folks who um, had some issues in their settings uh, over the this week. So anyone who is joining as a new member, welcome. We're happy to have you. Um, try it out tomorrow um, for the community session and um, we'd be happy to have you in our community um, as an active and lively participating member. Um, next week we have another Pivot and Thrive interview with Laura Neal of Malas and Mandalas. Uh, Laura shares mindfulness practices through her jewelry, and she's also going to be sharing a workshop in the next few weeks about everyday mindfulness and ways that you can bring it into your life. Um, so you can attend either or both events, and we're really excited uh, for the opportunity to um, share those events with you um, at no cost. And I'm just so so inspired by the work that everyone's doing in this community and the ways that we're able to come together. And, you know, it's the pandemic offers so many challenges, but it also inspires us to use the resources that we have to connect in different ways. And so thank you for showing up today, uh, for the ability to connect on Zoom and um, just create a, a community of people who care. Um, so it's been a pleasure to share this space with you, Farin. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your time and your story and, and um, just, just sharing this space with us. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, thank you for having me. I kind of needed a deposit of some joy um, in light of what I've been holding. And so um, I was really looking forward to being in this space. So thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really mm -hmm. glad you're here. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.